Hi, my name's Chris Price, and I'm going to talk to you today about the Salomon Senseride 5. So in providing a trail shoe review, I think it's important to give full disclosure as to where I've come from, to then coming and running in this shoe. So prior to the Senseride 5, I've been running in the Ultra Superior 5, which is actually a zero drop. So quite a significantly different shoe from the one we've got here. Also with trialing this shoe, I've had three runs in it. Uh, across about 80 kilometers ranging from a 13 kilometer run quite technical to yesterday a 46 kilometer long run so the Salomon Sense Ride 5 is positioned as an all-terrain shoe and there's not too much different from the Sense Ride 4 however there's some features that I will uh, show you now the lugs themselves have changed slightly so we've got a 3.5 mil lug the actual position and pattern of uh, the contra grip all-terrain contra grip has changed to give it uh, more preference for wetter and softer ground. The other change is in the midsole. So the actual makeup of the sole itself in terms of its stack height and drop is the same as the Senseride 4. However, the foam composite has changed from the Senseride 4. So we've now got an EVA energy foam blend. So it's gonna be really interesting to see how that goes. They tout it as being comfortable for a long run, but still have the responsiveness for a shorter, faster run. So the first aspect that the shoe we're going to talk about now is its drop and stack height. So in the heel we've got just over 29 mil and in the forefoot we've got 21 mil for a just over 8 mil drop. And we know from research that with a thicker midsole we get greater deformation so that's the squishing of the actual sole and this mitigates a lot more of the impact force that we get when we actually hit the ground. Now for some this might be of concern because when the, we get greater deformation or squishing of the heel, we do spend more time on the ground. So it sometimes feels like our feet could be heavier or we're not as light on them. And for me, personally, this was certainly an aspect of the shoe that I was foremost in my mind when trialing it, coming from a minimalist background. So what I actually end up experiencing was something quite different. So we know that with uh, a greater drop, so eight mil, this shoe tends to be on the higher end of drops for a trail shoe, that it actually positions the foot more in an anterior loading position. So we get less ankle dorsiflexion and we get less knee flexion, which actually puts us in a more energy efficient position, ready for toe off. So another thing we know from research with shoes, if there is variable stiffness along the longitudinal aspect of the shoe, so what we're talking about is stiffness from the rear foot to the forefoot. If we have variable fitness along this plane, there is a uh, potential to decrease running injuries and the Salomon Senseride 5 really lends itself to this. We find that the rear foot to midfoot is actually quite stiff and the flex point or where it becomes a little bit more supple is quite high up in the toe box. So you can see there the flex point is quite high. Now for some people, and I've read some reviews where this is actually a negative for them, obviously based on whatever their biomechanics and foot strike is. But for me, I found this really beneficial and knowing that that responsiveness there is there with the stiffness in that rear foot and the potential to reduce running injuries is a big plus for this shoe. So whenever we try on a new shoe, obviously things are gonna feel completely different. But I guess one thing to be really confident about with the Sensorize 5 is we've got some research to back up what you're feeling. And specifically, I'm talking again about that variable stiffness from rear foot to forefoot and that high toe flex, but also the responsiveness and the drop in terms of putting your foot in a greater biomechanical position. So what I want to talk about next is the heel flare of the Salomon Sensoride 5. So the heel flare, what we're talking about is the angle from the base of the heel cup to the outside of the outer sole and this angle that it creates. Now, research tells us that a wider rear foot in conjunction with a really nice stable heel cup gives us really great stability. So it stops the ankle from inverting or everting and also prevents a lot more torsion through the actual shoe. So really good in aiding injury prevention but also creating a stability and giving us good control when we're running. But one thing that I am conscious with the heel flare is if this is the natural width 
of our heel. We always have proprio reception through that area and receptors that tell us where our foot is in space. And if we're running along the trail and looking three steps ahead and identifying where we're gonna place our foot, if we've got a larger heel flare and we come up against something like this rock and we anticipate we're gonna be standing or landing to the side of it, but our heel flare actually catches the edge of it, we then get disturbance in terms of the feedback into our, our proprio reception. And this is where potentially we can start to see ankle roll. So this heel flare was one thing for me that I was like unsure of when I was trying the shoe, but actually now having run in it, I can happily say that it hasn't really been an issue and I haven't noticed it whatsoever. My foot still felt really stable, my heel, and the responsiveness and the stability through the heel was actually really good. So for me, not an issue with this heel flare. Next thing we wanna talk about is the EVA composite of the midsole. So I've spoken about this previously. We've got a new blend in this shoe from the Senseride 4. So the EVA foam we know from research provides really good uh, force mitigation and deformation, so it's really comfortable. But the downfall of that is that its durability is not great. So while I got great responsiveness out on the trails, felt really comfortable, it'll be interesting to see how this shoe performs after we get two to 300 kilometers in it. So the Senseride 5 weighs roughly 286 grams. Now, for me, this was a non-issue. Even yesterday, running through the rain, when the shoe was completely waterlogged, had no issue in the shoe continually felt light throughout the whole run which was fantastic other thing i want to talk about from a personal experience is the toe box so again coming from a minimalist and a belief that we need to create space for our toes to display to really get the best of our, our performance out of our feet i found the toe box in the sense ride 5 actually quite roomy and comfortable and that was the reason initially why i moved away from salomon because they were quite narrow but notice now in their last it's actually got a little wider so the foothold uh with the lacing and the the tunnel tongue that's been designed with the sense ride 5 really held my foot in a nice firm position plenty of room through the uh the toe box and no feeling of slippage through the foot so no jamming of the toes or that when going downhill so from that perspective a really comfortable fit i love how flash they are this new color look is fantastic and to be honest once it's cleaned up i can actually see myself wearing this as a casual shoe so not only an all-terrain shoe but maybe an all-purpose shoe one thing I do want to note though is with the lacing system. We know how well the uh, lacing system has worked on previous uh, Salomon models. And again, true to form, works really well here, but we also are familiar with the little pocket that Salomon has on the tongue once we do lace the shoe up. The issue I find here with this one is it sometimes gets stuck underneath the top laces and to be able to pull it up and then tuck the excess lace in, can be a little difficult so maybe an improvement there but it, in the grand scheme of things a very small and minor issue on an overall fantastic shoe so with trialing the sense ride 5 i really tried to select a whole array of terrain that kunyani offers us to really get the best feedback from the shoe also running in various distances to really see how it performed over the shorter more responsive and the comfortableness of a longer run and to be honest I'm really struggling to find anything negative about the shoe. I know there's been some great feedback about the Senseride 4s and how well people perceived those and felt with those. And I'm really hoping that those people now find that the Senseride 5 builds upon that feeling and performs just as well for them. So finally, with the Senseride 5, we're gonna talk about price point. I think, surprisingly, for the caliber of shoe it is, its price point is very competitive. And so for an all-purpose trail shoe with the performance capabilities that it has, I think you'll be hard-pressed to find a similar shoe of such great value. Mm.